Windows and virtual machines kind of go hand in hand, but what about Windows and Docker? And I'm not talking about running Docker on Windows, I'm talking about running Windows inside of Docker. Now this is all being made possible by this here. So this is made by, I guess, Docker, and they have what's called Windows, and you can run this inside of a Docker container. Now I'm not just talking about Windows as in a command line or something like this. I am talking about full blown GUI Windows desktop. So you can see here, the actual deployment method of this is pretty much the same as any sort of Docker. We can use it all via Compose, and it's actually really straightforward. So you can see here, I'll just zoom in a little bit for you. You can see that we've got the services, you know, and we're using an image, and we can actually define what type of Windows we want to deploy. You can see here in the example, they're using Windows 11. But if we come down a little bit, you can see we've got the whole fleet. We've got 11, 10, 8, we've got XP, and, you know, and then all of the flags that you can add on here if you want to change the languages the keyboard layouts where your volumes are stored and all of that good stuff so i'm actually going to deploy this windows docker container and we're going to have a play around and try to figure out some use cases of why you would want to use this now when it comes to the newer versions maybe you're doing some qa testing or whatever so you can spin up environments quickly do your testing get rid of them that makes total sense but what about using like older software what happens if we wanted to use uh windows xp and try and install some software on it is it better than a vm or are we still better with sticking just with a virtual machine let's have a play around and figure out so what we can do here, they give us the Docker Compose sample, so I can literally grab this and I can go onto one of my servers and we can deploy this and see how we go. Let's connect to my sandbox server, we'll SSH into this and then let's deploy it. So let's go and change into my Docker directory and we will make a directory and we'll just call this Windows and we'll change into there and we'll make it that Docker Compose file. So I'll just do a nano docker-compose.yaml and we'll go grab that YAML file. So, and we'll just start from the top here and we'll just figure out what we wanna do. So let's just start off with Windows 11 and just see how well this all goes. We can leave the devices how they are, the cap add will leave as the net admin, and then the ports we've got 8006 and then 3389. Now those are the remote desktop ports I believe, so if, to be able to connect to these we need 3389, uh, so we will leave that one there. Now just looking at some of the variables that we can add here, we can see that we can change the language if we want. Uh, if we can scroll down, I, I'm pretty sure it's that it's US by default, so that will be fine for all the testing. We can see here, we can also change where we want the volume to be stored. I think for now, my VM will be fine because we can see here, the default size for the uh, disk size is 64 gig. So I'm just gonna leave that how it is. I'm pretty much just gonna leave the defaults. But if you really want, you can set up the volumes to be on a NAS or wherever you want. Uh, if you've got more storage somewhere, then go for it. So to be honest, I think we just leave it as default and just see how we go with the stock standard uh, template, right? So let's just save this, close down a bit, and we'll do a docker compose up hyphen D. Now I'm assuming this is gonna take a while because the Windows 11 uh, ISO is quite big, right? So coming back here, if we come back up to the sizes, we can see it's about 6.4 gig. So this is actually going to have to be pulled uh, so we can deploy it, right? So it's going to, it might take some time. Now while this is deploying, you might be thinking, well, how's the license and stuff working? Now, the licensing around all of this, uh, from what I have seen and what I have read, is it just uses that trial license. So most of the Windows images will come with some type of trial license key, and that's what's being used here. I know that there was discussions when this first came out, people were talking about uh, it was using like pirated keys and stuff like that. That is not the case at all. It's just using like a, a temporary trial license or a testing license or whatever you want to call it. That's valid for a, a certain amount of time. Uh, and since these are short-lived, or generally they, they should be, this is going to be no problem. So this has actually just failed running on my Electron Sandbox and my, that Electron Sandbox is actually a VM in, a, in on itself so it won't have the capability to do virtualization like nested virtualization. Uh, I could probably figure that out. I've got an easier solution. I'm just going to install this on my Zimmer board instead. Alright we're on my Zimmer board now so uh, I've got the Docker Compose so let's just run that again. So the Docker Compose up hyphen D. I haven't changed anything in the compose file. So I've already pulled that image, hence why we didn't see that. So now we can see that the Docker is, container is actually up and running. 
So if we go back to the documentation, it says here that we should actually just be able to go to port 8006 and continue from our browser. So let's try that. Right, here we go. So as we can see now, we can see it's downloading Windows 11. And it's at about 11% now. This is going to take a little while because it's about 6 gig. So I'm going to be right back once this is finished downloading. And then we'll just continue and see how this performs. And then I'm going to try Windows XP to see how that goes and see if we can install some, you know, some maybe some older software or whatever. And just see how well, uh, you know, Windows 11 performs versus a way older uh, version like Windows XP. Also, while all of this is downloading, I just wanted to quickly shout out that I have actually set up a merch store. Uh, it actually came out really cool. So this is my sweater. So it's just got TikToks on the back. And then it's got the little mascot on the uh, on the front here. Um, there's hoodies, uh, hats, beanies, um, yeah, all types of stuff. Um, a link will be probably on the screen and in the description. If you're keen on supporting the channel, grab yourself some merch. Let me know what you think. And yeah, thank you so much. Right, we can see now we're actually building the Windows 11 image. So we're downloading it. We're extracting it. Now we're building it. <laughs> so I don't know how many other steps there are, but let's see what happens. All right, we have some movement. We've built the image apparently. We're connecting to the VNC. Let's see what happens. We've got some failed to boot, loading boot, starting boot. So let's see what happens. I guess we will just wait. And we've got the blue set up as starting. It's all looking pretty positive, to be honest. So again, what we've done is we're on a web browser, but we've connected using uh, no VNC. You can see this in the top right hand corner. It says no VNC. So we've, that's how we've connected to this. So it's a full blown operating system running in that Docker container. And we are just connecting to it via VNC to, you know, say remote desktop essentially, right? So we can connect to it. Now you can see like this mouse cursor is a bit sluggish and stuff like that. Running it via the browser can do this regardless if it was running in a Docker container or not. Uh, sometimes you get way better performance using remote desktop, but again, since we're going through the installation here, you wouldn't be able to use remote desktop at this point. Uh, so it's quite cool to be able to see all of this. So we can see that it's doing all the copying of the Windows files now. So we'll just let it finish doing its Windows setup, and then we'll come back once this part is done. I'm pretty keen to, to have a look at Windows XP and see if Windows XP does work just like this and we get the cool uh, setup screen and you know that OG Windows XP setup screen. Um, I, I was hoping that they'd have something like Windows 98 or something but they don't but you can use custom images so possibly we could just use our own um, I don't know like a 95 or a 98 image and give that a try as well but let's see how the Windows installation goes first and then we'll go ahead and try the XP stuff. All right because the Windows 11 is taking ages and parallel i'm going to deploy windows xp so we can just have a play around so i'm actually on my unraid machine at the moment here one that i actually covered in my previous video or however long ago i covered that now so i'm going to save this here there we go and let's do a docker compose up hyphen d on this one and let's get windows xp running in parallel so i don't have to wait uh for the windows 11 then do this after the fact let's get them going at the same time so this is going to pull the windows xp image now um we didn't see that in the previous one because i already had the windows 11 uh, pulled so this is what that process looks like so let's kind of just wait let's check in on the windows 11 it's uh 32 percent so let's just jump back to the windows xp creating that network creating that container now and that's starting so let's just see how that goes there we go. So that's all started. So we should be able to connect to this one on port 8006 and we should see the Windows XP stuff. And there we go. So we can see that we are downloading the Windows XP image now. Uh, so let's just let that finish doing its thing. That looks way quicker as well. Um, so yeah, let's just wait and see how that goes. I have no idea what bobpony.com is. I don't want to go to it, but we're pulling an image from there. <laughs> so it's good enough. All right, this seems way quicker now. So we're initializing the network. We've already extracted it. We're connecting to it already. It's only been like a minute. Um, and now we're in the Windows setup. Look at this old school screen. So here we go. So I guess we'll just wait and it should boot into the install. Yep, so now it's setting up the files. You can see at the bottom, man, this is cool. I have not seen the Windows XP uh, setup screen in a long time. And there we go. So now it's going to partition and just set up all the drives. So let's see how this goes. Um, the, there's a lot of problems you can get with setting up XP on newer machines now just because disk size, too much RAM, all of this stuff can actually throw out the install and you just can't do it. So all of this has been handled for you 
this could be quite nice um and if it runs quite smoothly then if you just want something to you know use xp maybe you want to just uh you've got a bit of software you want to try and run now i don't know how well software runs inside of this i guess that's what we'll, we'll try figure out uh but this could just be a good way for you to quickly do some testing quickly to use that application rather than having like this full dedicated virtual machine sitting there you can just spin up that docker container do what you need to do and then jump back out so windows 11 still sitting at 48 percent windows xp at 34 percent um we already know who's going to win this race it seems uh but yeah let's see how this goes right so the windows xp machine has just restarted well i should say the container uh we just seen the login screen there well the um the splash screen of it starting up and this is looking promising so i've got my mouse cursor again like i was saying before when you connect via the browser you do get a bit of like input delay and stuff like that so like that delay you're seeing here could be uh better once we actually get in and if i can actually remote to this then yeah it'll be a lot better so it's uh, installing windows now and it says that the setup should take 39 minutes now that could be the case that yeah just throwing this is pretty slow but generally when you're running on newer hardware the install is a lot quicker but who knows? As a kid, did you ever like grab the mouse pointer and then hold it here and that was your way of checking if it was progressing because these progress bars move so slowly. Like watch, we're gonna watch that mouse pointer and we're gonna see if it moves the tiniest bit. Because I remember we'd be installing a video game or we'd be playing an online game and it would have a loading bar because we were all on dial up. And we'd be watching that progress bar to see if we'll go past the tip of that cursor there. And then that's our way of knowing. And as you can see, we've just actually just got... Did we just move? Yeah, we just went in front of it. So you can see that's our way of knowing if it's uh, if it's moving or not. I'm pretty sure I just moved it in front of it. Anyway, I remember doing that. And uh, I'm going crazy waiting for all these to finish. Now, my expectations for these two are not high, okay? We're, I'm not looking at this as a way to use a full-blown desktop environment uh, for daily use or anything like that. This is just pure playing around and seeing how this works and just, yeah, how uh, powerful they can be. And, you know, is it a good alternative to the traditional virtual machine or not? Um, and we'll find out. My expectations is no, it's not. But who knows? Uh, I could be surprised. So let's see. Man, you do a lot of waiting, don't you, when you're dealing with uh, Microsoft products? A lot of waiting. <laughs> Whoa, here we go. We've got um, the Windows XP, very, like the first initial startup screen starting there. And there we go. There is that Windows XP background. There is the Windows XP uh, start bar. Uh, let's just have a look around. So let's see how well this actually performs. So we're in it now. Here's my documents. We can click into my documents. Uh, we can view. We can create new things. Um, wow. Okay, as you can see, look. See how there's like that bit of a delay. I'm going to see if I can get into remote desktop um in a bit but let's just check the windows 11 and see how that's going all right so that's just getting ready let me see if i can get the uh remote desktop for this if we can actually connect or not i don't know how it's going to work i won't have a machine and stuff like that but uh let's see all right i'm just trying to connect now as the um via remote desktop to the windows xp machine so the username should just be docker and i should it should not have a password so clicking ok here should just log me in and yes we here we go all right She's a bit slow, <laughs> but, uh, oh, actually, actually, I'll take that back. That's actually pretty smooth. And as you can see in the bottom right-hand corner where I am, uh, just said we have 30 days, right? That's that trial license. Um, okay, it's, it's looking pretty good. Uh, let's, um, oh, man, MSN, Windows Messenger. This won't even work, but, oh, man, I <laughs> Windows Messenger was such a... Oh, wow, that's a, a blast. So, uh, can we access the internet? We've got Google. <laughs> oh, my God. This is funny, man. All right, let's see if I can connect to uh, One News, which is just a news outlet here in New Zealand. Uh, let's see if I can actually access this one now. So, let's click there and see if we can actually access these websites. Uh, already looking pretty promising. Uh, it's a bit slow. This web browser, yeah, but we can. We can access it. Okay, cool. So there is a web browser that will allow you to uh, run it on XP so you can access these newer websites that generally aren't normally supported. So look at the stats for the Windows 11 machine. You can see the CPU usage is at 200%. So my machine is actually on fire and is um, going to burn the house down. But um, 
I don't know what's going on now. Let's just close down of that. But you can see we are actually now logging in. We have hit the Windows 11 login screen. It's only been like an hour that this took to stand up. But again, it's all hardware dependent, right? Like the hardware that I'm trying to run this on isn't fantastic hardware. If I ran it on like my actual uh, home server, then it could be a lot better. But I've got some critical stuff running on there that I don't want to just run something like this and then it brings the whole system down or something. <laughs> so it's just, yeah, I've, I've put it on a little machine, hence why it's taken a while. But with the power of editing, you haven't had to sit around for an hour. All right. This might take a few minutes. <laughs> this is, oh man, this is nuts. Okay, we are so close. I, I, I want to get to the point where we're in and we can see the desktop. I'm not going to quit until we get there. <laughs> if you are literally watching a while we're, we've got it to this point, you're a legend. Okay, because this is, this is the drag and I don't know how much I've edited out, but this has been a process, but I'm keen to see it through. It's too late. You can't say almost there. I've already perished. It's been 120 years. <laughs> oh my gosh, we have finally made it. Okay, I'm no longer um, some bones. I'm back. Okay, this looks like Windows 11. Um, that's my Mac taskbar. Uh, where's the Windows taskbar? Um, honestly, I don't think we're going to get much out of this. Uh, it's already been, I think it's taken like oh, two hours to get to this point again. It's very well hardware dependent, um, but I was just wanting to test this out. Your results will definitely vary if you run this on something a bit better. Uh, you've seen what the Windows XP was like. I'm assuming that will be the same experience for Windows 11. If you're running it on some better dedicated hardware than uh, what I'm running it on, which is the Zimmer board. I don't even think the Zimmer board by itself would support Windows 11. So the fact that it's even running in a docking container uh, speaks volumes for itself, to be honest. And there we go. We can see we now have the Windows 11 taskbar. It's popped up. Um, yeah, it actually did open. I don't know if we can open like File Explorer. Let's see if that will open. As soon as we get File Explorer opened up, I think we can officially call this. <laughs> this is taking ages. Oh man, this my my poor my poor Zimmer board is probably like molten lava at this point. Oh, she's not too hot actually. I think it's just given up. It's like, I, I don't know what you're wanting me to do. <laughs> there we go. Okay. We can see we now have um, the, I don't know, 6% of the Windows Explorer up and running. There we go. Look at that. We're in. Oh, and also um, I've connected via a remote desktop as well. So this is all via remote desktop. And yeah, everything seems to be working. Actually, it's kind of getting a bit faster now. It's still slow but again this hardware is slow i think this is how it ran when i tried to install windows on the zimmer board natively so to be honest it's slow but uh it's hardware related so that is playing around with windows inside of docker not docker running on windows uh it's been quite cool actually it's it's actually quite a great way to get it up if i really put it on some dedicated hardware i would gather that this experience would be way better it would be a lot more smoother i was surprised by the windows xp the sound coming through connecting via remote desktop everything just worked um switching between the versions if you want to have the better control over your install users uh, where your volumes are stored all of that stuff you can do that link is in the description so you can have a play around uh, to the github repo and have a play around with the doc compose for deploying windows let me know how you get on um, there's also the Mac OS. I might have a look at that one as well. That would be quite cool to do. I know uh, Apple will frown upon uh, virtualizing uh, Mac OS, so we'll see how act how well that actually works. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. Um, if you do get this running, jump to, into the Discord. A link will be in the description. Show us how you how far you got, what you're using on it, um, and just how capable these things are. Let's have a go and just see, yeah, you know, VM versus Docker, uh, and see how well they run. Thank you so much for watching. If you got to this point in the video, thank you so much. It's been a bit of a journey. I really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, thank you so much and have a great rest of your day, weekend or whatever time you're watching this. Goodbye.